Uh, okay, Gav, uh, what's it like being a supporter of Plymouth Park? Love it. It's absolutely incredible. Um, not just because we're doing well, and I've been doing for the last few few years, but just supporting Parkway is such a such a good laugh mainly because people you're in it with everybody else they've all got the same interest as you you make new friends mate and yeah it's just just class such good fun Back in October, Parkway were a club on the brink. Defeats in the league, problems off the pitch, but with 10 games left and games in hand, they were in a position to push for a playoff spot. But murmurs of a title push could also be heard. At the time when we were having games called off, um, and they were going left, right and centre at one point, and the games were building up, building up, I actually had a chat with Lee and said, look Lee, don't get too disappointed about this because in a minute, these games are going to have to be played. They will be played before the season ends. Whatever happens, they will be played. But it could be, well, this, this could turn into a blessing in disguise. Instead of playing Saturday to Saturday, we might have a momentum here of playing Saturdays, Tuesdays. And as it happened, we were playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, and we were winning those games. It got a habit. You always got to believe, you know, you, you start, you know, as you get towards the end of the season, you you are starting to look at the table and you see where you are, can you do it, can you nick it. Froome are dropping more points, they're dropping points again, we're winning games. Yeah, you do, you t do tend to just look at the table and go, oh, we could, yeah, we could. We knew what, obviously, the points, you know, Tally could say, there was a lot of games to be played and you'd rather have the points on the board, but it gave us a challenge, it gave us a, a target to aim for, so yeah, it, in, in many sense, yeah, we were behind, but seeing that we could get there, it galvanised us, I think. Being at the start of the season, that was the aim, the playoffs were the aim, not saying we, not saying we never thought about it come to that, but I did think at that stage it might have been a little bit far from our reach, if I'm, if I'm being honest, if I'm being honest. Um, but they always give you a chance, some, some teams always give you a chance and there was other teams, everyone was beating each other and it was, the longer and longer it went on it was, it was more just, you almost felt that everyone was beating each other so you never, you never know almost. Yeah, so there's a lot of discussions around things like that but again, I think as a team we, we didn't get too carried away, we obviously we all spoke about it and stuff like that but we didn't get carried away and it was just a fact of just one game at a time, two games at a time, just, just win the next game and see where we end up. Um, I think as a team it was always, let's just see if we can get in that cluster of the top six, top five and just go and get in the playoffs. That was always the ambition for us as a team, I felt. Two things changed. One was that real belief that we could do something special, really push for a playoff spot or more and then once that belief came in that even stronger team spirit came in because you're all in this fight together so I think those two things together the eyes on the prize type thing and everyone's eyes on that same prize yeah that was the I think to me that was the the real the real difference that got us got us moving. Tuesdays would become Parkway's night for catch-up fixtures with each game holding more significance than the previous one they would stay in Plymouth as they welcomed Scholing to Belitho. You've been giving your detail, you know what to expect, you know what you're coming up against. Looking at their team sheet, it's very, very different to the team that we played last time out. But let me tell you something now. That can, that can work for clubs and it cannot work for us, okay? I've been multiple places with... We 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 have a patched up team, I'll give you one example. Fucking Willem the way. Matty Andrew playing up front and we found a way and we dug it out. Okay? So listen to me. Be professional, be fucking consistent, 
be relentless and catch them cold and still on the fucking bus, okay? Because the minute they go one nil down, I'm telling you now, you'll have a really good night and I think you'll get an app for you, right? Yeah. You'll get an app for But put everything into that first 25 to go and get that lead and then we'll grow from there, okay? Listen, it's huge. So fucking make sure you're on it. Come on, come on!
six on the spin now for Parkway, and a new hero would emerge as Callum Hall, unlucky with red cards throughout the season, would be back in midfield, amongst the goals and a man of the match performance. Callum's Callum, he'll give you 100%, he's like a Duracell battery in there, he, he doesn't, he's a quiet lad and he's one of them where he, he, he almost goes unnoticed, um, he's Lee's almost, like you say, unsung hero, he, he'll chuck him in the big games, he's, he'll rat around, he'll, he'll get in underneath the skin of the opposition, um, again, played at a good level, um, but it's lads you need in your team, in your squad, um, that really, really almost make a squad, because um, he can play in various positions and it will give you 100% week in, week out. It was back-to-back -back away days in the league as the club travelled to Gloucestershire to face Slimbridge. Another well-supported trip by the Parkway faithful, who share the coach with the first team. Even the board help out with lifts, and there is never a shirt or tie to be seen. We are not, you know, we're not probably the normal club. Um, in, you know, we don't turn up Parkway branded everywhere, and we will just, you know, I, tr I drive to every game, and quite often Jazz will jump in with me, Jenny and Gaz will jump in with me, supporters jump in with me, players jump in with me. You know, it's just what we are, you know. It's, it, it, we go to some games where, Certain players can't get away on a Tuesday evening and I'll say, don't worry about it, Lee. I'll leave an hour after the coach is leaving and I'll pick the lads up and I'll take them up with me because we need those players at that game. And there's, if they can't get away from work and we need to make sure that we've got a good squad, me picking them up on the way helps Plymouth Parkway. And that's the way that it, I, I, I think it, we work it, it, because we're like that. We need eights and nines all over, okay? Eights and nines all over again. There's no bigger incentive for us of win every game, you win the league, okay? It's as simple as that. Like I've said to you over the last three, four, four <coughs> days, everyone's looking down, waiting for us to fuck up. Same message as Tuesday night, don't fuck up here, okay? You cannot mess up here. and going down the sides. So it may be a case now of front dead ball kicks, two CB splitting, full backs going high, letting their two strikers and being a bit braver. We got it because you've got to invite them on now. And then I think now it seems true to me we got we're one there up against Parkway. We got to say now be a back five, be a back four one. If that's what it is, then I'm expecting 45 minutes of a title winning, sustained pressure. Pressure. Some's contributing, Levin started contributing, of oh, being fucking relentless. Yes! Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Matt Andrew would seal the win, but it would be the Iceman, Billy Palfrey, off the bench to keep his cool from the penalty spot to drag Parkway back in the game. He's just got this calmness about him and he's just got, you know, he's our engine room, if you like, in that middle of midfield and, you know, he's, he's packed up with some goals this season as well, which he needed to add to his game and he's done that. And everyone back to dust. Parkway's loyal band of away supporters would watch on as they notch their seventh consecutive league win in Gloucestershire. It would be back to Devon as the Yellows would look for eight on the bounce as they welcome draw specialist Larkel Athletic to Blytho Park. Do not let that fucking gate that is coming through that turnstile today go away from here knowing that we only clash with Arden once on Saturday and not come back, okay? They, they could be the difference in getting us over the line, okay? Getting us over the line. Don't fuck it up. Remember in the back of your mind, the prize, don't take your eyes off it.
Anxious evening, a red card and a last minute winner. This was non-league football at its brilliant best. But the night belonged to 19 year old loanee Finley Krask, who would show his brilliance in front of his gaffer, Plymouth Argyle manager Stephen Schumacher. Well I thought I'd been getting in those positions quite a lot in that second half. So I thought to myself when I got there before because I tried to cross it and it just got blocked I think and or it just went straight through, or something like that, and it just didn't go to plan, it kept happening. So I was like, next time I get similar in that position, I'm just going to hit the ball and just towards the goal and just see if something happens. And luckily it did, and it went in the bottom corner. And you know, I, I couldn't really believe it, because one of those we just hit and hope. And then, yeah, I saw Ethan running down from the side and all of this. I just ran down and just hugged him. And, you know, I think it was quite a big moment, and, and it definitely helped with the gaffer there. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, what, what a magical moment for him. And, and deserved for all the performances he'd given us, which they wouldn't have seen. They wouldn't have seen him. They'd have just heard the reports, they'd perhaps read the reports, seen the social media, but they wouldn't have seen how well that boy performed for us. And he, and he was like that every game. Not scoring goals, but he was putting in those types of performances every single game. And yeah, it was a magical moment. And again, that was him providing his contribution in that moment. And they all did that at some point during the season. If ever the character of this team was ever going to be displayed, it was tonight. First half, I thought you were superb. Second half, we said to you, just keep doing what you're doing. It didn't matter whether it took 60 minutes, 70 minutes, fucking 90 minutes. We was always going to find a way. And that's what we've done again tonight. And for you, for you, in front of your gaffer tonight, that was fucking A1. Yeah. And it Adam say, what a moment to potentially win us this fucking title. You, listen, you deserve to go to the very top. Outstanding. Yeah, but for the rest of us, I'm listen, I'm 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 not sure you want to name me. But listen, boys, that's another one done. Another one of the harder ones, our, our own form. We keep fucking believing that home, we're hard to be. You see, the red card game didn't really change on that. We were just fucking ruthless. They rid their up, and we've got the job done. Fuck it! The euphoria of a last minute winner would last long into the night. Plymouth would again prepare for the next chapter of this Southern League season, as four days later, Belitho Park would welcome Hampshire based Lymington Town as Parkway looked to make it nine wins in a row. League titles are won on good defences. Football matches are won by good fucking strikers. Okay? There's a difference. So if the defence is right, the rest will fall into place. Alright? We're the second highest goal scorers in the league and our two number nines ain't got 20 between them. And that's not criticism. That's not criticism. They get in, out, in, out, in, out. That's the collective. That's where we're at. Okay? That's where we're fucking at. So many game changers, so many match winners. But I need to remind you, and I'll repeat it again, they are going to make it fucking <coughs> difficult. They're going to make it difficult. Play, I just said to the manager, you can come and have a go? He said, yeah, yeah, we've got it, haven't we? He said, it's the only way. He said, we don't want to be in that playoff. We want to be in the league. Get Cinder for a fucking day. So, the matchup, we should have too much. But they're going to get after you.
So sometimes people don't see that you, you play with niggles if you like or where you're not fully 100% where you just try and try and get through games and there was a few games in the season where I might not have been at my, my full self but I still try my best for the team but I didn't have that, that extra bit of sharpness where I can do what I usually do as, as a winger and, and beat people and, and influence games um, but towards the end of the season I've, you know, I've been working with Regan and um, felt a little bit fitter, felt a little bit like injury, I was injury free and I think that helped contribute to to my um, performances for the final sort of quarter of the season. Mikey Williams would round off a 4-1 victory as Parkway recorded their ninth win on the spin, which propelled them into second spot, as the winning run would be dubbed the streak by the Parkway faithful. We felt like we weren't gonna, ever going to lose. We were just going at it and at it and at it every single game, every other day. And it was just, that's what it was. But again, credit to the lads. They, they grafted their fucking bollocks off to, to get them wins and credit to them all. Um, credit to the management as well. So it, it was tough, it was tough. It was physically and mentally tough. Boys were getting strapped up and chucked back out within a couple of days. But yeah, we just worked and worked and worked until we just got them wins every single week. It probably hasn't really reflected um, on me yet how good a run that is because you're right, they don't happen and it, it shouldn't happen because leagues are competitive. Um, every team's got something to play for and it's not like we're playing every, the bottom teams every time. You know, we play some good teams in that run. It just felt like we were going to win the game. Every single game we weren't going to even concede, like you say, with the clean sheets. It just felt like once we went 1-0 out, the game was done. The confidence was the, throughout the team and being in the changing rooms and like we were going into games going, 
we're going to win today. And it's not, it's not like arrogance or anything like that. We just, I don't know, there, there, it was just this period that we were in where we were like, every game we were going into and we were coming into, we were like, we're going to win. And we know we are. So we're going Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. We're just ticking them off. We're just in a good, good place. Like, we all wanted to play for each other. We all knew how each other was playing. That confidence and mentality that we were winning games. We, we knew how to see out games. We were just... Uh, sort of a, like, a, like a train going through, <laughs> ticking them off one by one. It was relentless, but yeah, it was great to be a part of. It, it didn't become realistic. I can remember losing to Bristol Manor down here, and that to me was the game where I felt promotion was out the window. I genuinely thought, that's, I don't think we'll make the playoffs after we lost to Bristol Manor down here. And then all of a sudden, bang, we're, we've, hit, we've hit form, we've hit everything we need to hit, and we've just flown. Parkway would hope to keep the streak going as they stayed in Plymouth for another Tuesday night fixture. They prepared to face Worcestershire-based Evesham United at Belitho Park, with the knowledge that a win would put them top of the table. difficult night but a workmanlike performance. Yeah it was always difficult on this pitch, it's never easy to play so I think what we've got to do is turn them and get up the pitch and I think we've done that perfectly tonight, we could have been a bit better in the final third but um, we eventually set pieces won it for us which we're obviously clinical from, just need to keep pushing now. Lee always says it's it's someone every week, uh, this week Ethan gets applauded and he had a fine game in the field. Definitely, um, every week it seems to be someone different, that's the squad we've got. We've got a squad of 15 players that, if you pick any player, they're all going to turn up. And credit to Eve, he's come in and he's been like, never been away, to be fair. It's easy to play with him in there. He mops up and you can see why he's at the level he is. Ten wins, you came back in amongst those wins. Is, is, that, is that what's done it? <laughs> I like to say so, but no, the lad's been fantastic for each of the ten games and the whole season. And it's nice to obviously be at the top of the tree. 
Parkway would make it 10 wins in a row and top the table. But the talk after the game would be about the ghost goal, as Ryan Lane's superb strike was not given, despite the ball crossing the line. I was furious, yeah. Purely because it was one of my best goals probably at Parkway, where it would have been. Um, I hit the ball, didn't even feel it come off the foot, hit it that well. Um, I was just, I knew it went in. Their players told me it went in, everyone knows it went in, but it's one of them. And then after that, I was just playing like a man possessed because I was filled with rage. And God knows if I had a 50-50, what would happen? Because I, honestly, I was just, I was furious. It really was, um, yeah. But yeah, good job halftime came pretty soon because I calmed down then and then everything was all right. It was so far over the line, it almost went in one side and was in the other side as well. So I don't really get how you can get it wrong, but it was one of those things we had to try and try and get over it and regroup and it helped that we scored so soon after. I feel like if the game went on longer and longer, it would have played on our minds longer. Um, but it helped we scored so soon after and just before half time, so that really helped us going into the second half. The ghost goal would be just another talking point in a season full of drama. And that drama would continue as Parkway left Plymouth, top of the table, and travel to title rival Siren Sester Town, who sat third. Gloucestershire prepared for a top of the table encounter. Just make sure we're up there aggressive. We got more desire than your marker. Fucking be stronger, fucking cuter. And if we can't score, keep it a fucking life, okay? Keep it alive. Um, corners, Lenny on the right, Billy on the left, three kicks, the same two boys, Paddy's Billy Palfrey. Crowd's filling up, you've seen that, keep it quiet, alright? Get in faces, spoil their party, they've got to beat you, okay? They've got to beat you, don't let it fucking. Come on! Come on! Come on! Want to work! Want to run! Want to work! They're playing to their strengths. We utilise our strengths now and again, and we've got so much more to give. We've got there's a reason we're the top scorers in the league. Yeah, there might be a reason that they don't keep they, yeah, they keep clean sheets as well. But there's a reason why we are, because we've got firepower. We've got people that can hurt football matches all over. I gave you that stat about everybody in here has given an assist this year. Four but two have now scored a goal. We've got people all over the pitch that can hurt football matches, and what we need now is people stepping up and hurting this football match. Come on, come on, come on! 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 Come on, come on!
first defeat in 11 games for Parkway and after drop points by second place for hometown the Yellows will remain top going into the final four games of the season. Get your fucking heads up, pick yourselves up, we're still in control of this title race, okay, we're, it's still ours, you now haven't got to go and put 15 fucking wins together, all you got to do now is win four, win four games, three of them at home, you guaranteed to be fucking champions against teams that you should be beating. And that starts for Tuesday night against fucking Oliver at home. Okay? So you need to pick yourselves up. You don't need to warm with fucking self pity. You need to fucking be bouncing. Done? Get in. Listen. So what that means for us now is we were in control of four points. Now we're still in control of three. And if we lose another game, goal difference might become factor. But don't lose, boys, do we don't fucking lose. Hey, the only thing to lose is this title's ours to fucking lose. So we pick ourselves up, we let them have a moment tonight. They'll finish second or fucking third. They'll be in the playoff. We'll be winning this league in two weeks' time, mate. No, it's said it. Well done. I just felt that, you know, we've missed an opportunity there because we, although you might say we looked a bit jaded, I was actually quite happy with the second half performance. And sometimes you don't always get what you deserve in football, but perhaps maybe overall we weren't really good in the first half and we weren't brave enough and we're better than what we showcased in that first half. Um, but perhaps just a little reality check as well. And that's not always a bad thing. Four games remained as Parkway sat three points clear at the top of the table. And they would return to Plymouth for two home fixtures in a row. The first of which will be a third encounter of the season against Wiltshire-based outfit, Highworth Town. Um, corners, Lenny on the right, Billy on the left. Three kicks, the same two boys. Penalties, Billy Palfrey. This one, hey. Ten points required. Go and make it, get down to the Come on, come on, come on, come on. Stop, guys. Get on the front foot. Be aggressive. Come on. Stand it on, yeah. Hey, stand it on. Hey. Going at it. Yeah. 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 
A 2-0 win would keep Parkway top, but it would come at a cost. Tom Bath, a player reborn since his return from a loan spell, would see his season ended as the number nine would rupture his Achilles midway through the second half. When it happened, I almost thought someone had just booted me in the back of the leg. Um, thought, but then Mikey sort of comes over and said there was no one near you, and it was almost a shock to me that there was no one near me. So I thought, I have sort of done something here. Um, so I've stayed down and uh, so I've, the physio sort of come on um, and as soon as he come on he knew instantly that I had ruptured my Achilles um, and yeah and then I, I instantly my heart sank the f to think probably that's my season done. Um, I didn't know the extent of as in the long term sense of the injury but it was one of those things where it happens in football um, but it was just a shame it happened at such a point in that season. Well, I thought it was a bit of a strange one, to be fair. Um, you know, there was nobody around him at the time. You know, when he's, he's gone down, it looks like he's in quite a lot of serious pain. Uh, as I was running on, I could sort of see, see his leg flopping around, and I thought, God, I don't, don't want it to be like a leg break or anything like that. You know, and getting on, Tom, Tom seemed fine, to be fair. But having that sort of conversation that we have when we go on to the pitch and find out what's going on with the player and sort of having a feel of the area, yeah, we, we sort of come to the conclusion that his, his Achilles, his Achilles had, had ruptured. Uh, so yeah, probably the worst injury that I've seen on a field. Um, but yeah, hopefully Tom's recovery isn't too long and he's back scoring goals not, not too far in the future. Parkway would also see Finley Krask return to his parent club. With the squad short on numbers, they would call upon a familiar name in former professional and now youth coach Jamie Lowry, as they prepared to welcome relegation threatened Mangotts Field United to Belitho Park. There's no one like him. He just, like he plays in slippers, honestly, like he just sits there. Any, any sort of game, just keeps the ball, does the simple thing, creates opportunities, knows where to be, uh, confident, experienced, doesn't run, doesn't need to. Uh, Never had a bad game. I don't think I've seen him have a bad game. So, yeah, what a player. Brilliant individual as well. You know, model pro, if you will. I know he played in the professional level, but, but model person to have around for our younger players looking up. And, uh, you know, I, I think the player's eyes certainly light up when he walks in the changing room. No one believes Sorens, Froome, Manafarm, none of them believe that they can win it. They all believe that that title is fucking ours and it's done. Let me tell you that. Okay, but you need to be reminded it fucking ain't done. You got three ninety minutes to get three wins. I know mathematically we only need two and a draw, 
Like I said Tuesday night, we don't do fucking draws. We don't do draws. We go and we win all fucking free. Okay? We win all free. And as I'm saying, we don't struggle over the line. We canter over the line. We stay relentless. We stay together. And we keep fucking driving and keep taking those games off and keep getting those W's on the board. Parkway would canter to a 4 0 win in front of a crowd of 600 plus, and the atmosphere was electric thanks to the Parkway faithful and a new group of Parkway youngsters who would bang their drum and sing their songs. We've, been, we've needed that, I mean, especially now the ground's enclosed, stuff like that, to get them behind the go, it's, it's good. They almost suck the ball in the net sometimes, you know what I mean? So, no, it was, it was, it's good to play in front of, and it's, it's, it's not nice going away. We've been to many away grounds and they've got things like that behind the go of 20, 30 young lads just giving everyone stick. It's, it's not nice to play against, no matter who you are, do you know what I mean? So no, it, was, it was good and a long way to continue, I suppose. For us, it's another magic moment. It's another game ticked off. It's another three points chucked on the board. It's another win calculated. Monday will be a whole different animal. And please be mindful of that. It genuinely will. It'll be a battle, it'll be a slog. We've used the subs really, really well today. Matty's obviously not got on. We've got important players off, even though you're all important to me, you know you are. But we've gave people rests who needed rests. So now, what we do now, quick turnaround, 24 hours to fucking recover, which is no time at all. We board that bus on Monday. It's a, hey, we board that bus on Monday, and I'd like to go as far as saying a win, a win, will borderline win you the league because you've just gone another plus five on the other two. Listen, it's tempting fate, but we know we've got to win every game. Draws ain't good enough for us, losers ain't good enough. So go there and win. I think you can put three quarters on the handles as opposed to having the half that you've got now. But for me, listen, rest up, recover. We fuck up. Parkway would leave Plymouth for one final time as they travelled to already relegated Devon side, Barnstable Town but in no way an easy fixture. Devon Pride was up for grabs, and Parkway had already tasted defeat at Mill Road earlier in the season. Don't sit too deep, play high, 
don't be afraid. They ain't, they got a seven four. He's going to run you. Obviously, the goalkeeper, if I remember, kicked really well, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So be aware of that. On his goal kicks, let's work him out from the get go and see what our distances are. But make sure we pin them in. We press the life ever. We run all over them and we go fucking. Come on, come on, come on. That wasn't a gimme, that wasn't a gimme game because we, you know, we, we lost to them in, in, in a cup competition earlier in the season and they had obviously signed various players on various things but um, yeah it was pleasing to see all the fans there and the way we celebrated at the end you know and um, it was all good banter, we stayed in their clubhouse for a while which, is, which was you know good, yeah it was, a, it was a great day and really that's what normally football's all about, it's brilliant. Glad to be on the goal. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's what non league's all about. It's, you know, the fans behind the goal with the flares and, you know, you're winning the game quite comfortably in the end as well. You know, it was just a great, great day. It was one of them that mathematically wasn't done, um, but we felt that was the game that was going to be the one that probably decided it um, with obviously the games that we had coming up but no it was it was a good day for the club and again we sort of we ran right really now coming to here we said to you for you to use the motivation of last week of, of sorry 
of, of the leaf cut and counter here and spur it on to make sure that we expose them, we punish them and we celebrate properly like a team who's just going to win the league. Listen, that today, 4-0 away from home, patched up, minimal fucking options for us. We've gone and dug out another clean sheet and another four goals for the good. Listen, for us, and I'll speak on behalf of everyone here, of the staff, the club, everyone, you've been absolutely fucking faultless. Faultless all season. You really, really have been into win. 13 games from 14, it's insane. At any level of football, you need to be applauded for that. Yeah. Do it in the manner that we have where we've been ruthless our cutting edge has been fucking second to none going away from home keeping clean sheets winning games if any team's got any aspirations of getting to the levels they want to get to you've got to go away from home and win and not concede and that's what we've done here again today and we've done that a number of times for us now next saturday we need to rest up we need to recover and we need to embrace what we've just fucking done you need to take it all in you need to maximize it you need to process it I need to get the Saturday, I need to enjoy your fucking selves, you fucking did. One last thing for me. The hard work starts now, okay? The hard work starts now. Every single one of you will be offered new deals to come back and stay and go on the next part of the journey. We'll add players to it as well. But listen, the good times are only just fucking beginning. Before I pass over to Matty, outstanding. Well done, all of you. Hey, boys, fucking well done. Okay boys, no, just really quickly, um, fantastic performance. Set your target, didn't we? Six points and two clean sheets, we're halfway there. So Saturday we're going to complete the job, get the next three points, another clean sheet, and then it's really party time. Come on. Parkway would arrive back in Plymouth with one hand on the trophy, and after 35 games, they had the knowledge that either defeat or an eight-goal swing would stop them lifting the title. A record crowd of over 1,300 fans would fill Belitho for the final time of the season. Great club, you know, you've got all the fans that come in, you've got the group of lads at the end that are always here. You know, it's, it's a loyal club, and you know, everyone's really nice and you feel really welcome when you come in here. And, no, it's been a really good season. All those fans, especially Chelsea, even like Spennymore, you're getting off the bus and you're seeing fans here like, we're 10 hours away. <laughs> it's like, mass, like, fair play. Like, without them, we wouldn't have done half the stuff. They, they've, they've won us some of the games this year and it's as simple as that, really. They're a massive part of this, this club. I mean, they're just so important to our success, and like you say, it's it, it's sort of different age groups as well. Like we've had the you know the guys that have been here years that, that we love come in, and now all of a sudden there's a, a new sort of general public and, and sort of other fans and the youngsters coming through. It's amazing to see. To get four, five, six hundred week in week out is the next aim. Um, I feel like they are a sort almost like a twelfth man. They get behind you. Um, having the young lads, like you said, in behind as well, it's, it's almost a bit of fun for them. Um, they sort of, they're giving people, the opposition, a bit of stick and it's all good fun, do you know what I mean? But it, it also drives us on as well, knowing the fact that they're paying their money to come watch. And it does drive us on and uh, hopefully next season um, we can get those numbers and get them, get them up and uh, up with the big boys. Last season, or this, before COVID, it was we're winning, we're winning, we're winning, we're winning. Yeah. No, this season was more tight. Yeah. It was decent games. Yeah. Squeaky bum times, wasn't it? Yeah, that's it. Like like, Whoa, bums. come yeah. on! Yeah. And then in the back of the onion sack, yeah, wasn't that's it? it yeah. Let's have some of that. Yeah. We had long hair before this season started. Yeah. Now it's all fell out when it's stressed. But yeah, this season's yeah. been fantastic. Uh, really good. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Plymouth Parkway, league champions. A season that had almost everything. The club suffered loss, heartache, bad times, good times. And even though the destination was magical, the journey turned out to be quite the adventure. To be honest with you, the last time we'd done this and sat in front of these cameras, it was we felt like we had a total different squad then and we felt like that squad was massive but I think this year it's been different we've just got we've just got honest hard working lads yeah we've got some very very talented footballers but we've just got hard working lads who will give everything for this football club each other the management and stuff like that so that's where I felt we've been different this year and again that's probably why we've earned our own luck and scored so many late goals because we have just literally grafted our bollocks off every week every day until we got to where we wanted to be and that's obviously league champions. The team just typifies what I am as a person, just hard work, graft and the rest to take care of itself and yeah, just happy to be champions. Just still can't believe it, Say, saying it feels weird but yeah, really, really happy to be champions. Special, <laughs> what, what more can be said? Uh, the bit furthest distance in the FA Trophy, our first season in that. Um, beating teams in higher leagues has probably helped propel our league campaign massively, but give us confidence to achieve what we want to achieve in that league. And just the amount of games and ticking them off one by one, considering the situation we were in at, at points in the season, uh, monumental achievement uh, from everyone involved. Special. Mixed emotions off, off and down, but there's definitely more ups and downs, especially the last six months of the season. It's been unbelievable. Since November, there's just been no looking back, really. It's just, yeah, the best season personally I've had, and I wouldn't change any of it, to be honest. Unbelievable. Amazing. Um, overachieved, maybe. Personally, I think did really well and as a club we did really well and we are the champions. <laughs> Yeah, we can only describe it one way. It's been an absolutely marvellous experience to get promotion in our first year in the Southern League, um, to now go up to the, the Premier League. You know, if somebody had said that was going to happen three years ago, I would have believed it. So it's been, it has been a fantastic season. We've had extra people walk through the door. 
we're getting people, you know, we're getting the five, six hundreds, yeah, we had 1300 on the, on the last game. You know, I'd love to think we could get that every game. But let, let's see how we go. But to sum it up in one word, I would have missed it. It's been a great ride. I hope I'm still involved in this ride for the next years to come because I think we could do something special. We could. Remarkable, I think, is probably the word. Um, when we look back at pre-season in our first couple of games in the competitive league, you kind of thought to yourself, this is going to be a tough season. Um, but to finish where we finished and had the season that we've had, both on and off the pitch, um, you couldn't you couldn't write a better story. And to be part of it and follow it and be a fan of it and see where Parkway's going, you don't know where it's going to end, do you really? Next season has just epitomised what it means to be at Plymouth Parkway, which is, you know, the supporters mean everything to the football club. Um, the football club means everything to the supporters and it's one big family and as one big family we will continue to be successful. To be titled Southern League champions and have the medal around your neck and come from nowhere not so long ago, again, it's an absolute maximum credit has to be given to, to the playing staff. Um, we're all knackered, we're all knackered, but we've got another three days in us to go and do what we do with, with the beer involved. Leobs, Plymouth Parkway, 7 Premier Division. Congratulations. It's got a ring to it. Outstanding. Get in. Well done. <laughs>